let's tune the telescope in to galaxies being born. And oh my gosh, who ordered this? We're finding galaxies in the Dark Ages. The Big Bang Theory describes how the universe began from conditions that are way more extreme than anything we can recreate. So when it comes to the very start of the universe, we're in the realm of educated guesses, and we should be careful about believing any explanation for what caused the Big Bang. But that doesn't mean we can't wonder and ask questions, like what might have existed before the Big Bang. This is Reveal the Mystery. If you are curious to learn mysteries of the world, space and beyond, consider subscribing. Scientists use telescopes to study the distant cosmos and uncover the universe's origins by capturing ancient light from galaxies. This light, traveling through space, takes time to reach us due to the universe's expansion. Initially, early photons bounced off free electrons, making the early universe opaque. About 380,000 years after the Big Bang, these photons were released, eventually shifting into the microwave range as the universe expanded, leading to the discovery of cosmic microwave background radiation. Anything before this era is beyond our observation, leading to the use of projections for insights into earlier epochs. Over time, the universe's entropy increases, causing energy to disperse. Entropy defines our perception of time, with higher entropy representing the future and lower entropy representing the past. This phenomenon is central to hypotheses about events before the Big Bang, though its cause remains unknown. Before the Big Bang, some scientists believed the universe was calm and motionless, staying small for an incredibly long time. Then, at a certain point, something triggered a significant change. Although this early universe might have appeared stable, it was actually fragile and easily influenced. In the scientific community, they term this state a false vacuum. To grasp this, picture a valley surrounded by tall mountains. People in the valley might think it's a secure place, but beyond the mountains, there's a sudden drop to the sea, the true safest spot with the least energy. Similarly, the early universe might have been in a false vacuum state until something made it genuinely stable. So what kick-started the universe? In the realm of tiny particles and their behavior, there's a lot of uncertainty, much like a game of chance. If the early universe followed the rules of tiny particles, many different things could have happened. Think of an underground river flowing beneath the valley, slowly carrying tiny pebbles away into the sea. This continuous flow weakens the foundation of the valley until a critical point is reached, causing the valley to collapse. And there you have it. This is how we believe the universe rapidly expanded into what it is today with the Big Bang. Now modern physics suggests there wasn't really one point holding all the stuff and energy in the universe. Instead, the thing that initiated our universe is called cosmic inflation. It all began as a very cold and empty space, incredibly tiny, but it had so much energy that it pushed things away, making the universe expand very quickly, like inflating a balloon. Imagine a bomb about to explode. First, the material inside it start to break down, creating hot gases and releasing energy. As the gases accumulate and spread out, they push against the walls of the bomb, creating pressure. Only then does the explosion occur. Similarly, all the energy that caused the universe to expand was released into space in a big bang, heating it up and generating different particles. At that point, the universe had grown almost a billion trillion times its original size. The once tightly packed energy spread out over vast distances. Let's discuss the concept of entropy and its relevance to the universe's complexity. It compares the Big Bang to a party popper, highlighting the formation of distinct shapes in our universe instead of chaos. It mentions the horizon problem, where distant parts of the universe have the same temperature without enough time for information exchange. The idea of eternal inflation suggests multiple universes with unique rules, including one similar to ours ideal for life. Alternatively, it presents the universe's expansion from a tiny state, with regions once close now distant. Currently, we can only observe 3% of the universe, leaving 97% beyond our reach. This perspective hints at hidden temperature variations and the possibility of the universe being flattened 
by expansion. Over time, a mysterious force called dark energy becomes strong and makes the universe expand faster and faster. Dark energy, a mysterious force, pushes things apart, eventually overcoming gravity's pull. This leads to a dramatic event called the Big Crunch, where everything collapses back into a tiny point. But this isn't the end. Another Big Bang happens, restarting the whole process in a never-ending loop. The, ne the universe's constant expansion leads to an interesting idea involving extra dimensions based on string theory. It's called brain cosmology. Picture everything in existence as a huge cosmic book. Each page of the book exists in a lower dimension than the book itself. Scientists call these flat surfaces brains, and the idea is that they represent different universes, each following its own set of rules. These brains can move and bump into each other. When they collide, they produce a lot of heat and energy, leading to the Big Bang. The universe began with the Big Bang about 13.8 billion years ago, starting with the incredibly hot and dense Planck epoch. During this period, the universe was extremely tiny. With the Planck time and Planck length as its limits, it was a time of chaos and high energy, leading to the creation of tiny black holes and wormholes. After the Planck epoch, the universe entered the grand unification period where fundamental forces separated. Gravity became distinct and energy levels were exceptionally high, around 0.0000000012 seconds after the Big Bang, electricity and the weak nuclear force began to separate, and the Higgs field appeared, giving particles mass. This Higgs mechanism shaped the building blocks of the universe. Baryogenesis occurred during this hot period, resulting in a tiny surplus of matter over antimatter, which led to the universe being filled with matter like what we're composed of. The universe seemed just right with its constants and conditions. About one millionth of a second after the Big Bang, it had cooled down to about 10 billion degrees. At this point, tiny particles called quarks joined together to create protons and neutrons. Around three minutes after the Big Bang, the universe was a bit cooler, about one billion degrees or less, and something called nucleosynthesis happened. It's when simple atomic nuclei like hydrogen and helium formed in big numbers. This was a big deal because these nuclei are like the basic building blocks for making everything else in the universe, like stars and planets. Fast forward to about 380,000 years after the Big Bang, and things had cooled down to around 3,000 degrees. At this time, the first molecule, made of helium and H2, appeared. It was a shift from simple atoms to complex molecules. This allowed for new chemical reactions to happen, setting the stage for the creation of more complicated molecules and structures. Also, electrons finally stuck to nuclei, and light could travel freely through space. This made the universe transparent and allowed us to see its history. Over billions of years, the universe changed. Dark matter, which doesn't give off light, started to have a big influence because it's much heavier than regular matter. Scientists think there's about six times more dark matter than regular matter. Dark energy, another mysterious force, began to take over the universe's expansion around five to six billion years ago. We still don't really understand what these forces are all about. So what's next for our universe? We're not sure. 